All right, so uh, good morning. Welcome uh, to Lincoln Shorts. I'm Sean Roberts, Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network. I have with me Deputy Secretary of State uh, for Georgia, uh, Jordan Fuchs, and we're asking questions from the point of view of the voter. Um, and the first one uh, that I want to ask you, Jordan, is uh, what should the voter do if somebody asks for your ballot? And this would be either at your doorstep or on the way to dropping it off at, uh, at possibly a voter drop box or maybe going to the elections office. So no one that you don't trust should be handling your ballot. So if there is somebody from a political campaign knocking on your door saying, hey, um, we're going to go ahead and collect your ballot and take it to a drop box, that is actually against the law in the state of Georgia. When the Secretary of State, uh, Brad Raffensperger, took office, one of the first things he did was make ballot harvesting illegal. And so what, now that we're in a COVID environment where everyone is requesting absentee ballots in record numbers, um, I think this, this security measure definitely comes into play. And so no voter wants to have someone they don't trust or know handle their ballot. Excellent. So um, a, a variation on this is, uh, are there uh, official um, sources that are allowed to handle your ballot? I assume the U.S. Post Office, um, you know, mail carrier is allowed to handle your ballot. Uh, are there uh, other exceptions? Sure. So uh, if you would like your spouse or your husband or your partner to drop off your ballot at a local drop box or at a local elections office, uh, that person may be able to do that. Um, that's not against the law. Uh, the, the official folks who are allowed to handle ballots, and this is, this is important because a lot of folks don't know this, but um, once you drop off your absentee ballot through the post office um, or through a local drop box that is uh, managed by the county election official, only those election officials are allowed to uh, transport your ballots. So the, these are not volunteers. These are not random people up the street. These are county election officials who are managing this process. Excellent. So the, um, I've been told, and actually I've kind of experienced this myself when I was younger. I lived in a very remote area um, where uh, literally to get to a post office, it would take me about two hours, um, boat ride, car ride, and uh, I think one other exchange. Holy cow. So, <laughs> so um, other folks, and I imagine there's a couple possibly areas in Georgia that have the same situation. Uh, there's likely somebody who uh, volunteers from time to time, and maybe even a, a rotating group of people to uh, carry the mail for their neighbors. Is there an exception for that kind of situation as well? Or is that I don't believe so, but I'm happy to look into it. Okay. Yeah, the, uh, the common example I've heard other than my personal experience is um, uh, um, uh, Native American reservations. That that's because uh, generally uh, they're in more uh, more remote areas, but I have my own personal example. So, um, so, uh, so that um, it kind of going along with this, um, a, a, a different uh, variation of this is a drop box. Um, what are the laws in situation in Georgia about drop boxes? Is there many states there's uh, uh, kind of lead into this, I guess. Um, there's only one drop box per um, county um, because it, they consider it has to be uh, monitored by the elections office. So it's actually at the elections office. Is that the case in Georgia as well? So prior to COVID-19, <clears throat> excuse me, Prior to COVID-19, there was not a need for drop boxes. Um, if there were drop boxes, they were housed internally inside those election offices. So uh, people could securely walk up to their elections office and drop off their uh, absentee ballot. Now, because of the huge influx, historically, the state of Georgia has about 4% of its voting population voting absentee at any given election. Uh, we are seeing record numbers. And when I mean record numbers, we're seeing 50 or 60% of the population uh, requesting an absentee ballot, voting population. So the need for drop boxes and a secure source to directly get that information to the election official became 
very clear back in April. So the Secretary of State through the State Election Board proposed a rule allowing counties to install these drop boxes. These are uh, secure bolted to the ground drop boxes that have 24 seven monitoring associated with them. Right. So um, the state of Georgia is a little bit unique because we took on this challenge very early on during the pandemic. Uh, we gave the counties a grant program so that they could be reimbursed for their drop boxes through the state. So uh, the concerns that you're seeing online, say in Texas or other locations where they, they don't, don't want to have the hassle of a drop box, it's really because of a security issue that the right. sta this state has already addressed through outlawing ballot harvesting, through making sure that the counties, if you do have a local drop box, that it is being monitored 24 seven um, through physical security or through uh, cameras. And then we're also making sure that the counties are constantly collecting those ballots so right. that they're not sitting there. Um, and so that's that's the other part that I think is key to this is that they are uh, the counties are asked to collect those boxes every single day as we move closer to the election. Excellent. Yeah, you certainly don't want them to run into the case of them overflowing, which has been reported in some of the primaries. That's that would be yes. a very, very bad result. Um, okay, well, I think we exercised this topic as far as I could take it. <laughs> Thank you very <laughs> much. Um, this has been Lincoln Shorts. Uh,